Hey guys, Eric Martel here. There has been a lot of talk about what's gonna happen with the housing market. Is it gonna crash or not? I'm gonna share with you what my thoughts are around the housing market and some data points that's gonna help you understand what are the, the drivers for a potential market crash and whether they are there or not. So what we're gonna be talking about is what makes a housing market crash, how inflation plays a role, if the government can do anything to stop it, how it will affect the housing market, and if the market crashes, are you gonna be foreclosed on? Make sure you like and subscribe because I'm gonna be giving you updated tips on a constantly changing real estate market. So before we figure out if the market is gonna crash, we have to figure out what makes a housing market crash. So the basic idea is the same. It's always about supply and demand. So in order to have a housing market crash, we need to have a severe increase in housing supply and a severe decrease in the housing demand. So how do we do that? Let's talk about supply first. So supply can increase dramatically if there is, for example, a lot of forbearance and foreclosure. Like it happened in 2008, 2009, there was a lot of houses that were foreclosed upon and all these houses hit the, the uh, real estate market. You could see that the house prices were going down. So when there's so many houses available on the market, the buyers have the option, they have a lot of uh, choices out there and they can negotiate better. They have, the market is to their advantage. On the other side, demand can decrease in many different ways. Demand is the number of people that are trying to buy a house at a given time. So some of the things that affect demand would be the interest rate, uh, an increase in unemployment, as well as uh, an expectation that the real estate market is gonna go down. So right now, there's incredibly low inventory right now, low supply, and incredibly high demand. And this is why we're seeing the prices go up so high. For us to have a real estate crash, we would need to have these things flipped around. We need to have an increase in supply, a dramatic increase in supply, and a dramatic decrease in demand in order for the crash to occur. One of the key factors that would trigger a crash or the beginning of a crash would be inflation. And you've probably started feeling the inflation. We've been talking about the inflation being at 7% a year. And why it is important is that as inflation goes up, it makes houses and everything less affordable for people. So just to give you a frame of reference, just before COVID started, the inflation was 2.5% only. And currently, it's about 7.5%. One particular factor that affects inflation is oil prices. And the reason for this is that oil is used everywhere for transportation, transporting goods to, uh, to ports, to the farmers, to the grocery stores, and as well for people that are working and commuting to, to work. What that means is that if the price of oil goes up, the price of everything also goes up. So what does inflation have to do with the housing market crash? Well, inflation makes it less affordable for people to buy houses. Not only because the house price go up with the inflation, because the price of everything is also going up, that means that people have to spend more money on groceries, they have to spend more money on cars, on gas to go to work. That reduces the amount of income they have available to buy a house. And this drop would reduce the demand for housing. It would reduce the number of people that are trying to buy a house. And the other thing that inflation affects is interest rates. And it's the role of the government to make sure that the economy runs smoothly and it's growing at a sustainable rate. And if the government doesn't control inflation and let it go rampant, it could really collapse the whole economy, which means that a lot of people wouldn't be able to afford basic necessities of life, like rent and food. So what can the government do to control inflation? And the number one tool is an increase in interest rate. And the Fed already announced an increase of 0.25% the, the interest rate. And they're planning to do a similar increase every month till the rest of the year. So that means a potential increase of 1.25 to 1.75% increase in interest rate in just one year. So an interest rate increase would make it less affordable for people to be able to buy a house. Imagine if the interest rate goes from 2% all the way and doubles, it's gonna increase your monthly payment uh, to, to the bank. It would make it less affordable for many people to buy a house. 
that would again reduce the number of people and reduce the demand for housing. So an increase in interest rate would not only reduce demand for the housing sector, but would also impact other aspects of the economy and would reduce the demand for all products and reduce the inflation. And the federal interest rate has been at zero pretty much since the financial crisis. And uh, it's, so this is really a very important tool that the Fed is gonna be using in the next few months and years to really curb out the inflation. So one of the reasons why we have inflation today is that there is a lot of money in circulation. Basically, the government has printed so much money that it's, it's everywhere and it's being used and it's being used to invest in real estate, to buy products and buy services. And this is why we're seeing the prices go up and the inflation go up so high. So another tool that the government has is to increase the bank reserve requirements. That means that the bank will have to hold more money in their reserve uh, and reduce the amount of money that's available for loans. The result of that is less money in circulation. That means reduced consumption and also reduced demand on the real estate market. So the goal is to reduce the money supply that they have artificially increased because they printed so much money since the financial crisis. And that reduction in money supply would reduce the inflation, which would also uh, reduce the, uh, the interest rate as well. Based on the current inflation rate, the government is gonna have to reduce the money supply in order to curb down that inflation rate. How does this inflation affects the housing market? Inflation affects the housing market in two ways that sharply decreases demand. The first one is that inflation makes housing less affordable, but everything else less affordable as well. And secondly, when you have inflation, the government is trying to curb it down and put it under control and increase interest rates. And the result of this is that it makes housing even less affordable for people because the mortgage payment is much higher than it used to be. So this is a double whammy. On one hand, you have the inflation going up. On the other hand, you have the government that's gonna increase the interest rate. And both of, both of these factors are gonna push the demand for housing down. And because of these two factors combining with one another, it's gonna really reduce the demand dramatically. So let's talk about the last most important element that could affect demand. And that is household income. Household income is about how much money people make. From 2019 to 2021, we've actually seen a decrease in household income. It was a small decrease, but still, it's a decrease compared to a consistently increasing inflation. From 68,700 in 2019 to 67,400 in 2021. Even though this is a small decrease in household income, you have to realize that the prices of everything has gone up between 2019 and 2021. That means that households are making less money to cover their regular expenses, which means that housing is less affordable to them. Again, a net reduction in demand here. Another thing that affects household income is unemployment. So if you have uh, one person in your household that is not working or is working less hours, is gonna reduce uh, your, in, your household income. When we're looking at unemployment rate, the unemployment is at an all-time low. I don't expect an increase in unemployment anytime soon. Unemployment from February to March 2022 went from 3.8% to 3.6%, so a small decrease. At its peak through the pandemic, it was as high as 14.8%. So as you can see, unemployment is relatively stable and slightly going down. So in my opinion, I don't think it's a major factor that would contribute to a major housing market crash. So on the demand side, we have inflation, we have the interest rate increasing, we have stagnating household income, and we have slightly decreasing unemployment. But what about the supply side? The major factor that would cause a severe increase in supply is about foreclosure and forbearance. So a major event here would be if a lot of people would lose their home, would not be able to afford to pay their mortgage and would foreclose and the bank would foreclose on their properties. Therefore, these houses would go on the housing market. And this is a major contributing factor to a market crash. And this is what happened in 2008 when the financial crisis hit. According to the March 2022 Black Knight report, the national delinquency rate 
is near the pre-pandemic levels, which means that people are staying current on their loan just as much as they were pre-pandemic. So there's no changes there. To me, that means that this, this foreclosure fear is not a real factor that would increase the supply of housing on the market. One of the key indicators is the number of seriously delinquent borrowers. These are people that haven't paid their mortgages for more than 90 days. And this number has decreased by 72,000 borrowers last month. And the reason for this is that they're leaving their forbearance plans and start making their payments again. And based on these indicators, uh, if anybody is expecting to have a massive increase in supply because of foreclosures and forbearance, something that we saw in 2008, I don't see it happening in 2022. And Zillow says that housing inventory won't return to pre-pandemic level until 2024. And according to Redfin, the supply of houses is 4 million houses short. And what it is saying is basically that housing inventory is going to remain low for at least until 2024. So what does this mean? On one hand, we have demand that is declining. And on the other hand, we have no indication that supply is going to increase dramatically. So to have a market crash, we would need the demand to severely decrease. And on the other side, have the supply increase dramatically. And I'm not saying this. But is there something between a market crash and where we are now? So my take on all of this is that we have a demand that's decreasing. And uh, so that would obviously affect the housing market. So it might, uh, it might not cause a crash, but it might actually reduce the increase at which the housing uh, prices have gone up. And I don't see an increase in supply either, like from foreclosure. So if people are waiting to have a massive wave of, uh, of foreclosure homes to hit the market and really cause the market prices to go down, I don't see this happening because of the indicators that I mentioned earlier. So my opinion, my take on this is that, yes, we might see a reduction in house price increases, but it's not going to be significant. And I certainly do not see a market crash or a market correction. The only thing that could change this is if there was a sentiment from the homeowners, the people that are currently owning a home, that there is an upcoming or they expect the house prices to go down dramatically and they want to cash in before it's too late and everybody puts their houses on the market at the same time. So that's the only thing that the, the magical factor that could happen to disturb my theory. But based on the factors that are currently in play, I can expect the housing prices to, to kind of plateau or don't increase as fast, but I certainly don't see a market crash coming soon. In an extreme scenario, I may even see if the interest rate goes up to 10, 15% and we go into a hyperinflation, then yeah, the, maybe the house prices would go down, but I don't see any kind of dramatic changes in, uh, in the housing market. So I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know the future, but based on the information that I have, I don't see any indication that the market would crash anytime soon. All right, make sure you like and subscribe because every week I'm going to be putting out videos, busting myths about financial freedom, real estate investing. Thank you and goodbye.